Hello, mi gente. It's your girl Tori, indeed, and welcome back to Vibe to Vibe. I have a very special guest, Teresa Oaxaca. I see you're all dolled up. Oh, <laughs> and I absolutely love how you look, and it kind of reminds me of your doll paintings. So, if you can kind of give me the rundown of your whole outfit. Sure, I have a more classically inspired outfit, so it's. It's actually contemporary, but it is um, it, like a, most fashions are kind of a remix of, of earlier, right. sessions, but, but this is kind of like a, an alternative to mainstream fashion. And, and it's Ooh. definitely inspired by art periods that I am drawing from. So it's inspired by the Victorian era and also the book era. Wow, so it's a combination. Do you um, ever design your own outfits? I do. Oh, really? Yeah, I've, I've had a couple of things made, like tailor-made, and then I've tried sewing a little bit, and I've also just collected a lot of antique things. So I, I that, put them together. That was one of um, our fun facts about you, that you like collecting antiques, you like going to um, vintage shops and all that. So that's definitely marked down as one of our fun facts for you. And so when you exhibit or you're teaching one of your classes or workshops, do you dress in this particular outfit? Yeah, um, I, I tend to wear like brown and, and black and gray when I teach because I use oil paints and, and charcoals and inks. And so those are going to stain nice clothes. So I have about maybe just like seven dresses that I get away with wearing for every single class I teach for the last seven years. And I don't think anyone's noticed. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I'm not teaching the class, I, I want to wear anything but black or brown or gray. Uh -huh. And so I wear things like this and these things just would get dirty really quick. So I only wear them for posing for paintings because I do a lot of my own modeling and I also put them on other people um, and then I, I wear them out to art shows. Really? I, yeah, so anything in between, like, like, like this, you know, anything where I'm not actually painting, I'll, I'll wear, so that could be like a museum opening or an, an art show opening and like whatever I can get away with, really. What made you start wearing these outfits? I was in an art school in Italy and this would have been around 2005, 2010. And, and so I was um, in, in Florence, Italy, studying 19th century painting methods in a very old part of town in Florence. Florence has different you know, eras. So there's like the kind of center, which is very Renaissance, um, but there's also 19th century neighborhoods and then modern. And, and I was just stuck in the kind of 19th century and earlier neighborhood right. for five years. and. Um, I didn't have a computer or an iPhone back then, so there wasn't a lot of peer pressure, and and, and most of the people I interacted with were international students and, and just local Italians. So um, I I started uh, exploring with fashion, and um, I was interested in you know the the kind of centuries of art I was studying that that were around me. So it just seemed more natural to dress this way. And I was also interested in painting uh, portraits of people. And I, I liked older styles of clothing more than the modern ones. I'm right. not sure what it was. It, it might have been because when I first fell in love with art, I was looking at Renaissance clothing. So I was already kind of since uh, even before I started dressing up my in my head, my ideal fashion yeah. thing like a little bit older. Um, but I, I think I try to go for timeless in, in a way. So I just don't like wearing anything that has a logo or right. a and and I I also like I think I think there's a new term for this now. It's it's kind of big with with like younger generation. I think it's called time hopping. So it's oh. like oh yeah you, yes, yes. you can mix eras of clothes. I actually kind of mix clothes. <laughs> so I'm not really um, a historical reenactor at all. What are some of your memorable experiences while studying in Italy? I remember taking the bike around everywhere. So I, oh. I saw a lot of older narrow streets and, and 
it, it, a lot of the places that I was in in Italy were kind of like living museums. So they just had Roman architecture and then they would build around with medieval and, and Renaissance and, you know, all these things had been reconstructed throughout time. So you had architectural styles from all over um, the centuries. And then, and then there was uh, a lot of museums and uh, churches, which were kind of like living museums because they had similar things where they had had different centuries of additions added to them and, and they were very preserved. And um, yeah, there were a lot of beautiful gardens. Um, um, I was surrounded by people who were very focused on learning to paint in the style, like kind of like what's behind me, um, right? sort of this old master tradition that goes back to what they call like the Greco-Roman influence. So Hellenistic Greece. So, so, you know, basically like, like, like 300 BC, you know, and older. So, so really old, it's just kind of depicting the human form. And oh wow, I was always interested in this idea that the classical world, um, it wasn't just white, you know, like, like here in DC, we have a lot of white marble buildings, which are quite beautiful. And they're supposed to reenact this kind of old Roman order or time frame. Mm -hmm. But, but actually, you know, things are more like this. They were painted like this. There's actually traces that a lot of the old sculptures there, there were um, a, a lot of different skin tones on the sculptures and the clothes were bright colors. And so the buildings were probably bright colors. And so I, I kind of, um, love that uh you know that that kind of play of, of color um right i love european buildings too they're so they're so detailed yeah there's just so much uh love and, and effort that goes into them oh that's a good way to put it out of all the museums and places that recognize your work which is your most favorable or memorable and why Um, I, I liked uh, the Museum of Modern Art in Barcelona, the, the Mayan Museum. And um, I was recently in a show at the Via Bardini Museum in Florence, but I actually didn't get to attend it because I was just back from a long trip uh, in Europe and I was here at home doing things. Um, but um, I definitely, you know, like that museum. And I, uh, I've never had a show at the National Gallery of Art in Washington DC, but but I would like to, and then that's a museum I'm probably um, most most interested in. But it's it's kind of hard to just you, you can't just get into a museum, you know, like that's not something you you can get yourself into a gallery, right? More or less, if you decide, because it's uh, something of like a, a commerce relationship, you know, right. with, with the gallerist, and, and if you have enough clients, they'll they'll like that. But you can't just decide to get into a museum you need to oh, be yeah, absolutely not you need to be discovered as someone who's valuable to the culture at whole and that's not really something that we choose for ourselves you know that's something that others decide i know after we're dead so that's why i was um last time we spoke i gave you like this grand introduction like you know <laughs> that you were recognized and you've been studied um your work is global um and that's amazing so again congratulations and i definitely do know you can't just sign up for a museum. You have to be discovered. So. Speaking of your art, I know some of your favorite details focus on people, animals, flowers. How did that begin? What was the inspiration there? Hmm. I, I painted a lot of still lifes and I, I got tired of just making still lifes without people in them. So I decided to combine the two genres. But I, I think that, you know, animals and and uh, plants are just a big part of the natural world that uh, it's just nice to have present all the time, mm. you know, part of the natural world. So, you know, we, we do things to uh, protect ourselves from it, I guess, from, from the elements <laughs> in, in nature, but it's, it, we can't just forget that we're a part of it. Right. It would also be very dangerous. So, I, and it's just very beautiful and mysterious and, interesting to study and, and to depict especially when you know you're combining genres and times and you know that is part of who your art who you are and who your art resembles yeah art has been seen globally where do you see yourself 
next or what's next for you? Um, well, I've, I've kind of been on staycation as many of us have been for the last right. year. <laughs> I love that. And, um, I, I have a few travel classes planned. I'm, I'm going to go to Mexico City in December. and Ooh, That's maybe, nice. Yeah, down to Nashville, Tennessee in November to teach things. But um, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying a little bit of just staying in the studio and painting every day. It, it takes a long time to make the paintings I do. So a lot of times the ideas get years ahead of, of the actual completion of paintings. And, and so um, while, while I miss being able to just get on a plane and, you know, travel around another country for fun, um, uh, I, I just don't know if it would be very fun right now with, you know, the kind of pandemic in the air and everything. So right. I, I'm just uh, like taking a nice kind of staycation and so that all my ambitions are mostly just to make better art at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. And how about the frame behind you? I know before we went live and um, you mentioned that you did the frame behind you. Yeah, I, I just find it fun to make my own frames and I have a couple of them. Um, I'm working on a lot more actually right now. Um, I wait until the painting is about 50% done and I decide if it needs a special frame because these are quite over the top. So they, they mostly go with over the top paintings like like the one you see here on the right. It wouldn't really go with the one on the left maybe. So right. um, I'm, I, I decide that and then I start to, you know, make, make the uh, necessary arrangements for it. And then I end up putting the painting in the frame and painting them together. Uh, and to me, it's, uh, you know, kind of going back to the older style of, of, of the Renaissance and, you know, those earlier eras where the, the woodworking and the, the piece of wood that the painting lived in was almost just as important as the painting. Right. Oh, wow. It, so I feel like you have a, a creative, an endless creative mind when it comes to art and your art and your vision. And, you know, I, I don't expect nothing less from you. <laughs> And I think that's that's pretty amazing that you, you know, one, your artwork is great. Then you're making the frames and you have to, like, put them to coexist together. So the art, it's in itself, it's, the frame is art itself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I even got a frame commission the other week to paint a frame for someone else. So I'll, I'll be doing that as well. Um, there, there aren't a lot of framers anymore in North America. There's a few and, um, I, I, I believe of, of the two that I, I knew of, um, one of them just stopped doing commissioned orders because it's, it's just so difficult to make a living doing it. So it, it ends up becoming kind of a work of passion, but it, right. I think it destroyed their life, you know, because it, it took so much from them, um, and they couldn't pay attention to people and, and things, you know, that they needed to pay attention to. So um, I, I, I think it's just, you know, it's, it's hard to, just like it's hard maybe to be a, a, a figurative painter. Um, I, I think it's hard to be a craftsman uh, at the moment um, because, you know, you can do other things much faster with, with right. digital technology or, or hire someone else in another country to do it for, for much less. And so, craftsmen can't really compete. And so um, the majority of the frames that are available, they either run the gamut of being ridiculously expensive or being frames that are made in Indonesia and they come pre patinaed and then mm -hmm. they're sold by 10 foot sticks and then they're shipped in and then a, a local framer just chops them. And then you, you get left with a kind of a adjoining mark, which, Oh. may or may not be a big deal it depends but 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 basically like the there's there's not a lot of creativity in that you're just picking from a catalog um those yes. frames exist in bulk and so right i wanted to come up with a middle way where uh, i could still have some control over the design but but i could also afford it and so just making it myself uh was the best way 
and, and I just enjoy it as a craftsman. I enjoy it. That's awesome. Yeah, and it, it's so, so well done. It's fine. It's like fine art. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm into that, the fine art aspect. So I know we mentioned some fun facts about you before, but um, so we can just close, have a good closing. Feel free to mention anything or anything you have upcoming. I know you mentioned um, your workshop, um, but anything other than that, let me know. Yeah, um, I, well, well, just because of the extended staycation, I've, I've mostly been doing online activities when it comes to interacting with, with people. So I've got a YouTube channel um, under my name, Teresa Oaxaca. Let me put it up. I'm um, learning a little bit of filmmaking just so I can make documentaries about the paintings as I finish them. So I'm coming up with uh, kind of like artistic, the making of and, and unveilings and artist statements. Yeah. And, and I, I do wear a lot of nice clothes. So they're, they're a little more, they're not dry. They're very like right. old, kind it's, of it's cinematic. Creative. Oh, cinematic. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're going to be very over the top. And, and so that they're art films in themselves. Um, and so I'm, I'm working on that as a way to just get my work seen. Um, it's it's kind of like in lieu of having an exhibition in real life, I'm kind of making video exhibitions of my work. And then I'm doing um, online workshops on the weekends where I'm teaching the different things that I, that I do, like charcoal growing and painting oh, yes i saw that yeah various um like how to make oil paint marbling just the things that i get really excited about i just make it into a class so i i really enjoy um meeting in, in life with people kind of like we're doing right now right um, and, and you know and when you're passionate oh i'm sorry oh sorry no just just sharing it online i enjoy kind of talking to people so they're those are things i look forward to so it's great when you yourself enjoy it and love it and get excited about it to teach it because there's other people out there that teach something that they may know and they may be great at it or good at it, but you know, they're just doing it just to make a dollar. You're doing it because it's your passion. It's your excitement. It's something that you love teaching. So I'm sure the class will be, or the workshop would be fun, even if it is online and I have to gather my own materials or whatnot. And then just to have someone like you, like to show me something, that's an experience. So I definitely um, admire that you do teach what you love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been throwing up new things lately and they, um, they aren't things that I used to teach. I've got a few classes that are tried and true and I've been teaching for years and, and I put those online, but I also put on things that I don't even know if people are going to be interested in. I just do it because it's really fun. That's so, so cool. Well, thank you again for spending your time with me and doing a follow-up. I absolutely love the dress. Keep being you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you again. And I'm Tori and Dee, and we're on Vibe to Vibe UNTV.